KCOD Broadcasting weaves the listening environments of 99.9 WQRC, Ocean 104.7, WFCC Classical 107.5, Cape Country 104, and CapeCon.com's website experience to reflect the lifestyles of the people who live, work, and play on Cape Cod. We hope that you enjoy this podcast. I'm Laura Reckford, and this is Sunday Journal. I'm here in the studio with Stephanie Weaver, Managing Director of the Cape Cod Conservatory. We're going to talk about what's going on at the conservatory this summer. Stephanie, welcome to the show. Thank you. Now, summer is a very busy time at the conservatory. For our listeners who do not know about this very active and lively organization, give us an overview. Well, it's it's a wonderful, magical place on the Cape in the summer, as as we all know. And what's what's incredible is that you know, compared to other places where I've lived, where everybody leaves in the summer, people actually come here. So we have wonderful offerings for uh, students of all ages, actually, in music, dance, and art. And the conservatory operates year round. We have two campuses. One is located in Falmouth, and one is located in Barnstable. And we have experiential offerings: music, dance, art. As I said, students of all ages. We have a a half-day preschool program at each campus, which is Arts Infused, which is kind of the seed of all of this. Um, But And we have over 150 events and performances as well throughout the year. We are, uh, for those of you who don't know, the educational or experiential arm of the Cape Symphony. Uh, We merged uh, about five years ago now, and that's just been been wonderful. But in the summer, we have um, special offerings that cater to the more um, sort of whimsical and holiday feel of the Cape. Um, the most exciting one, I think, is, is called Summer Sounds, which is a program. It's, it's kind of a band program. It's for students who play any instruments or sing. And we have jazz band, rock band, and traditional style, uh, classical band as part of that program. The students also do some community outreach. They go into the community and play with the town bands in the different towns. Um, They've also uh, played for workers at Habitat for Humanity sites, brought them lunch and played a lunchtime concert. Uh, So just a really fantastic community connection, uh, that program. And there are about 80 kids in that program. They're ages 10 through 18. Sounds like a great program. Now, some of us like to try new things in the summer, and I understand that you have some introductory classes that adults can can do there at the conservatory. Tell me about that. We do. In fact, we're calling uh, this group of classes the, the bucket list, which is really fun. Uh, we have completely entry-level classes, introductory classes in piano, voice, ukulele, and violin. And the piano classes in particular are are really interesting. We received a couple of years ago a grant from the Brabson Foundation to build a digital keyboard laboratory. So all of the keyboards are electronic, and the students uh, practice under a headset. So they're they're in their own kind of world. So no one can hear them, which adults really like because they tend to be very self conscious. <laughs> um, so and the teacher controls all of this through a master keyboard. And then we also um, have some iPads which add to the uh, the sort of the technical aspect of the class. And we're offering some classes in iPad um, music composition, iPad film production, digital photography, uh, things like that. So just- and I was going to ask about that in particular, the iPad classes. This is, this is really interesting. A lot of us have these iPads now. Some of us aren't quite as sure what to do with them once we get them. And so you're, you're teaching people how to use them to sort of make music. Tell tell me about that a little more. Absolutely. There are there are thousands, maybe millions of apps out there um, that just anybody can experiment with and create art or music. Um, you know, you don't necessarily have to have a background in music to do this anymore, which is really exciting because there are many, many people who have a, you know, real creative spirit who have maybe never had the opportunity to have music lessons or whatever. Uh, so this is an opportunity to really create. I mean, GarageBand is probably the most famous one. Uh, you could sit down and just, you know, create a, a television commercial 
um, music soundtrack just right out of the gate, having no musical experience. So um, the teacher will guide the students through those kind of things. Now, how did the conservatory think of doing this? Because this is new for you folks, I think. Isn't that right? How did this come about? This is this is new for us, and it was part of this grant that I mentioned. But um, we are trying to find ways to become more relevant to the students. We are finding new ways to reach everybody. And, and let's face it, everybody lives on their iPad or their iPhone. And really, you know, there are so many functions in life that are performed there anymore. So this is really a way to reach more people. And, and they're so accessible. They're so accessible. Now, is this for just for children, teens, adults? What ages can take those classes on the iPads? This is for children um, age 10 through adult, and we have those classes broken down into the different age groups. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's for, for pretty much all ages. And I was curious also on your introductory classes, because some adults, we, we might not want to commit to once a week. Do you have some way where someone can perhaps sign up for maybe six classes and take them when they can during the summer? Absolutely. Absolutely. Private lessons are the way to go, and especially adults with their busy schedules, you know, may not be able to commit to that. So we can we can create a flexible package for an adult who wants to take lessons maybe every other week or even once a month. You know, we have some students doing that as well. A great way to kind of get into a new instrument. And, of course, you mentioned the ukulele, sort of the hot instrument these days. Tell me about how the conservatory has reacted to everyone wanting to learn how to play the ukulele. Well, it's incredible. You know, I, I when we look at program offerings, we look at different things around the cave, and there are so many classes being offered. And you know, we really didn't think we'd get a great response, but all of the classes are filled. So, I mean, this is really, really the hot thing. It's a couple of things. It's it's probably the most social instrument you can possibly pick up, and people love that. Um, it's very accessible. It's easy to, to just make music right away. And the instruments are not an expensive investment. And we see little children doing this, playing the ukulele. We see adults. We see pe- it's really an instrument for all ages, it totally, seems like. Totally multi-generational. Yeah. Adults really love it, and it seems fairly easy to learn, perhaps. Is that right? It is. It's not as difficult as the guitar. The strings are a little easier on the fingers, and especially little fingers can get around them a little bit um, easier than on a guitar. Um, they're you know, just easy to play a couple of simple chords and sing some, some nice songs. I'm Laura Reckford, and this is Sunday Journal. I'm talking to Stephanie Weaver of the Cape Cod Conservatory about their summer offerings. Now, the conservatory has a camp for children, a special music camp. Tell me about that. The Summer Sounds Music Camp is um, a a week-long camp, although students can opt for uh, two weeks. And it's for any instrument, uh, percussion, guitar, voice, saxophone, you know, you name it. And it's being taught by Bart Wiseman, who's a local jazz drummer. He's very well known. Very well known. Yeah, really, really great drummer. And um, also the director of our our sea jazz program at the conservatory, which runs all year. Um, And Steve Gregory, who is the owner of Score Music Studios, runs the rock band uh, portion, which we added last year, which is just so popular. The kids, the kids must love, love that. It's it's just fantastic. And they do a concert at the end of each week. And in fact, it's it's really incredible. It started in Falmouth on Monday and I was there. And the kids come in and they're just kind of getting to know each other, you know, and it doesn't sound quite like a performance yet, you know, and then day two, you know, already they sound just incredible. And by the end of the week, they put on a performance for their family and friends outside. It's just great. That must be really fun. Now you have the program in in the at the West Barnstable campus and also at the Falmouth campus, is that right? Yes, and the Falmouth uh, campus program has already begun, although we are still taking enrollments for next week, uh, starting next week, and then the Barnstable program starts July 20th. So people can still sign up. There's still room in those camps. There is still room, yes. Now, the conservatory also has a band and summer concerts. Tell me about those. The Conservatory Jazz Band is a big band that travels all over the Cape. And and they do this all year, but they do a lot of concerts in the summer. Um, They are just fantastic. They're about a 12 to 15-piece band and feature local professionals, but some amateurs as well. Their leader, Ty Newcomb, just really, really gets them to swing. They are really, really good. And you can check. They have their, their own Facebook page, and there are some videos online that you can check out. And they're just, they're really, really great. They're playing all over the place. 
And there are other conservatory groups that play around the Cape as well during the rest of the year? Absolutely. We have student musicians that play at different venues all over the Cape. Uh, we have a regular monthly series um, at Liberty Commons. Um, we do uh, another monthly series in partnership with the Katuit Center for the Arts, the Cultural Center, and Wealth for the Preservation Hall, where we uh, rotate venues and have open, open those perform- performances up to community teachers and students. Those are also really wonderful. And did you mention the is it C Jazz? The C Jazz is uh, the jazz program led by Bart Wiseman. He runs that program through the year, and they are eight week sessions. And we actually run that in three locations in Falmouth, Barnstable, and Orleans. Now we just added that um, location last year. Uh, we also have a youth orchestra. And they perform a couple of times during the year, and that's actually our really you know most natural bridge with the Cape Symphony. And um, the conductor John Hope Hawk works works closely with with that group, and uh, they've been really coming a long way. And uh, children. Children's Chorus, uh, the Cape Cod Children's Chorus, uh, led by John Yankee. And I would think that orchestra, if I recall, that's really made up of some of the top young performers on the Cape. Absolutely. It's it's by audition, and the students are very serious, um, although it's, it's very fun, but uh, it's a very disciplined and um, just really high-level ensemble. Now, I would think it's not too early to sign up for classes that start in September. We hate to think about September where we're here in July, but is that true that those classes fill up? Absolutely. And the Youth Orchestra is one. Um, The Children's Chorus is another. um, And this is for students ages 8 through 13. And what I love about the Children's Chorus is that um, it's it's really everybody has a voice and everybody can learn to sing beautifully. And this program really focuses on healthy, beautiful singing. And the students actually perform all over the Cape. And they went to Boston for the first time last year. They went on tour. (laughs) Very exciting. Great. And these are also some of the really talented students from all over the Cape, is that is there an audition for that chorus also? There is an audition for that chorus, absolutely. So people, and it's all, is it teenagers mainly in that chorus? Or um, does it- mostly, it's, it's younger, 8 through 13-year-olds, um, sort of uh, pre-middle school age. So there's a range uh, for that chorus. Now, what are some of the things people might not know that go on at the conservatory? What are some of the offerings that, that people might not realize are there? Well, I think the the dance program is is one of our hidden treasures. Uh, We have just a beautiful ballet program that's led by artistic director Jane Caputo, uh, who just recently put on one of her original um, choreographed works called The Witch of Mole Dyer at uh, Tilden at the college. And it's just, it's incredible. It's just beautiful um, what, what she does with those dancers. So I think that's one of our hidden, hidden treasures, I would say. And we also have a visual arts program for young students and a music appreciation program for adults and art appreciation as well. So a whole range of classes. It's not just music. And I think maybe some people don't realize that, that you do have the arts. Tell me a little bit more about the arts uh, program you have there. Absolutely. We have at each campus a a visual art program for young students. And that actually starts with the three-year-olds that um, start in our preschool program. and The really little ones. Really little ones, yes. And um, the instructor in Barnesville is Nancy Pettibone. She's wonderful. And at the Falmouth campus, uh, Alicia Buccino runs a, a parallel program. Uh, we also have a yoga for kids program that's that's really fascinating. Um, the art appreciation for adults and we call, it's called the Cultural Caravan and uh, uh, Susan um, she runs a class based on a specific exhibit and then takes a busload of students up to Boston or wherever the exhibit might be at the end of the class. So it's a really just special experience. And of course, as you mentioned earlier, you do have these two campuses, one in Falmouth, one in West Barnstable. And I think some people might not know you have the two campuses, actually. Right, right. And and we're hoping to even expand even further. But um, it's our you know, hope to put music and art in the hands of everyone on the Cape. It sounds like you're doing more in the Lower Cape. You mentioned Orleans and mm-hmm. trying to sort of spread out so that people in the Lower Cape who might find the drive to West Barnstable is too far, that they can take classes there. Absolutely. Geography is everything on the Cape, <laughs> we've learned. <laughs> 
And then when you talk about expanding, is it do you think you might be looking for an, a new home in the Lower Cape, or is it more just places to offer classes? Well, so far, just places to offer classes. Um, we definitely have facility expansion needs in Barnstable. We are uh, pretty close to our capacity there in, in a lot of programs um, and actually beyond it. So um, that's something that uh, would be on the horizon for sure. Is there the ability to expand on that campus? Because I know you're sort of nestled in the woods there. We do own about 14 acres of property there, so there is that possibility. And perhaps I would think that you, you as a nonprofit, you're doing fundraising for that that plan and, and perhaps other plans. Yes, um, that's, you know, really just conceptual at the moment. And um, we don't have any any solid plans. Um, but we are we are doing fundraising all the time. Yeah, we have an annual fundraiser called the Artini Partini uh, that you might have heard of, which is a lot of fun. Local bars compete for the most artistic martini. A well-known event that people talk about, and do you have the? What is the date for that one coming up this year? Um, that is not locked in yet, okay. uh, but that will probably be in March. Okay, so uh, actually coming up in 2016, in 2016. The, the next one of those. Right. And in the last few minutes, anything else to add uh, about the Cape Cod Conservatory and, and especially where people go if they want to sign up for classes? Um, definitely. Our website you can register for for all classes online is capeconservatory.org. Or if you prefer to do it over the phone, uh, our number is 508-362-2772. Uh, we have... Um, a registrar on on site from nine to five every day who can help you with any questions you might have. Um, you know, I just think I'd, I'd like to share that this is just a really fun, welcoming place. And we have a little something for everyone and, you know, students of any age and any stage, especially adults. You know, it's never, ever too late. And I think that's one thing to point out is the ages. And I don't know if you know offhand because you, you mentioned three years old, and I'm sure you go well up into senior citizens. Do you have an idea of current current students, what their ages are ranging, maybe starting at three years old? Well, the majority of students are school-age children between the age of you know seven and 16. But we definitely have a growing number of adults. These new classes have been really, really popular. And uh, they're just – people are so hungry for these experiences here, and, and everyone's so supportive of arts and culture. And when they find out that they can make art themselves, you know, they're just – they're really finding these places. It sounds like a lot of fun. And unfortunately, we're out of time. I've been talking to Stephanie Weaver from the Cape Cod Conservatory about all the different things going on this summer at the Cape Cod Conservatory. Thank you so much, Stephanie, for being here with me today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm Laura Reckford, and this is Sunday Journal. This podcast is a presentation of Cape Cod Broadcasting, which is solely responsible for its content. Thank you for listening. For more information, please visit us at capecodbroadcasting.com.